Good morning, my friends. Grim here. I hope all is well. Welcome to Perusing Premodern number four, featuring Elves, which is one of those decks that just leapt right off the page at me when I first started looking at Premodern lists, and it's also one that people sometimes say is actually the most powerful deck in Premodern. We're going to see how it does here. This is my Elf debut. Myself and my opponents, except maybe Andreas who is a bit of a pre-modern veteran compared to us, we're all new to the format, right? So you're not about to see necessarily expertise, but you are about to see one of the most powerful and interesting decks in the format. And to be fair, I do have some experience with elves. I played them at the kitchen table, like many kids did. I actually ported them into modern when I first started getting into modern. And in my brief foray into pauper, elves were a deck that I played and therefore learned some of the synergies and little mini combos that exist in the pre-modern elf list, but also elves have always drawn me in. Whenever all these old bordered elves are playable, I want in. So we're going to do that here. Thank you so much for watching in advance. We're going to get into a deck tech briefly, and then three matches against three wonderful guys. I mentioned Andreas. He's actually the one who got me into pre-modern by making a fateful post about his latest mail day, showing some sweet old bordered cards piquing my interest. Andreas is making his on-channel debut as an opponent. I think he's going to be our third and final opponent here on The Rock, which is a frightening proposition for elves to take down if we can. And then we are also against Dan and Bobby, both playing blue base decks that I think elves are generally favored against, but both also splashing red for some very scary removal spells and sweepers. So we're talking about Dan on Threshold and Bobby on Tricks. Thank you to all those guys for participating, and thanks as always for the views, and above all, the support on Patreon means the world to me. Now, let's talk a little bit about the elf deck before we get into our games. All right, friends, so to begin by stating the obvious, elves are a tribal deck. We play a great many creatures with the elf type, but we are not above enlisting the aid of human druids, goblin legends, insect druid mutants, or indeed masticors, as the situation demands. But broadly speaking, this is a tribal deck. This is an elf ball deck. We are flooding the board with cheap, synergistic creatures, explosive starts, and we try to win the game with a big top-end bomb and a lot of small attackers, or by tutoring things that really stop the opponent from doing what they're doing long enough for us to get over the line one way or another. The way to tutor is survival of the fittest, and this card is very, very powerful in and of itself, and it's especially synergistic with a deck like this. We have, of course, the ability to power it out and activate it much earlier and much more often than most decks could ever dream of. We've got Squee Goblin Nabob, who's the number one synergy card with Survival of the Fittest. This turns Survival into card advantage, in addition to card selection. And we've got a lot of other tricks to play. Anger is something we can discard with Survival. Speeds up everything else that we're doing as long as we have a mountain. And Yavamaya Granger is a way to tutor the mountain, in addition to four wooded foothills, while also making a body and ramping us. So Yavamaya Granger kind of fuels anger. Anger and Squee both fuel survival. Survival, in turn, again can generate selection and advantage and makes all of these top end one and two ofs a lot more impactful than they would otherwise be. We've got Kamal at the top end. He's kind of the Azuri Renegade leader of this format helping go wide and go tall at the same time is a really good mana sink. We've got two of Deranged Hermit, who is an elf. He's a big rock top-end bomb, very hard castable at the top end of a mid-range deck, but also very, you know, early castable, for lack of a better way to phrase it, in elves. And again, he's a synergistic tribal body. Nantuko Vigilante is kind of our disenchant or naturalize on a stick that's main deckable because you can just play it as a 3-2 and go to beat town if you don't need the disenchant. And Masticor, who can take over the game against opposing weenie decks. 
But we're getting ahead of ourselves, aren't we? What does the engine in the core of the deck look like? Well, here's what it looks like. We've got 10 forests and a single mountain to fuel that anger, basically. And on the very off chance you want to, like, hard cast anger and squee because you're desperate. Wooded foothills to thin out the deck to get that mountain when we need to, but more often than not, especially in the first two turns, we'll just be grabbing a forest with it. And then... The one, the only, Gaia's Cradle, except I guess there are four of them, right? And this card definitely causes some stumbling. It opens you up to Wasteland. It gives you some one-landers, that the one land is Cradle that you would otherwise keep that you have to maul. And in multiples, it is clunky because it is legendary, even if sometimes you can justify and get a lot of benefit out of tapping one, using its mana, playing the other doing it all over again, having a really explosive turn. So Gaia's Cradle, the lowest floor, but by far the highest ceiling land in the deck, probably even in the format, right? This card enables just total nutty progressions in very early turns. Um, as far as the core creatures, we have four Findhorn Elves, four Llanowar Elves, Mana Dorks, Par Excellence, but we also have some kind of more unconventional Mana Dorking available to us, four of Kyrian Ranger, who's especially good when you have a Priest of Titania unchallenged, and or when you're operating off of only one or two lands, Kyrian Ranger is actually like a double Mana Dork when you otherwise are restrained on land drops, so absolutely crucial and very interesting card in the deck and virtual rangers kind of rounds out the mana dork it's just a one of but it allows you when you're deploying things to basically get another one drop down that you then you would otherwise not be able to in those crucial early turns wirewood symbiote rounds out the one drops and this card is arguably the most powerful of all of the one drops certainly it is the most unique it is an insect and you can bounce elves to hand with it in order to untap creatures. So just like Kyrian Ranger, it's very good with Priest of Titania getting another activation out of her. However, you can do all kinds of tricks with Symbiote. You can assign a block, a chump block, that would otherwise result in the elf deck, uh, in the elf death of whatever chump is blocking, and then bounce it to hand untap while you're at it, if that matters. You can also bounce Multani's Acolyte for repeated draws and to avoid the echo cost. Similarly, you can bounce Deranged Hermit for repeated squirrel token creation and again to avoid that echo cost. Wirewood Symbiote, a very complex and skill testing card to play with and against. You can also just bounce stuff even if it's not otherwise valuable to do so in response to removal, sweepers, what have you. Priest of Titania, we've mentioned this is the most singularly powerful mana generator probably in the entire format. And then Multani's Acolyte, it's the Elvish Visionary of the format. It's got a nice two power. It's a good attacker as well. And again, that echo cost most of the time, we can either just pay for it or we can bounce it or something, you know, and it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the only thing we haven't talked about in the main deck is Tangle Wire, and Tangle Wire is very asymmetrical because, number one, if the opponent doesn't play artifacts, you can tap your Tangle Wire. They don't have an artifact to tap that they don't care about tapping, probably. So it's a little bit asymmetrical there, but it becomes extremely asymmetrical when you talk about all the extra creatures and all the extra mana we have access to. We don't care, usually, if we're functional what we tap down mostly, or we have something we're happy to tap down. The opponent can get totally locked out. You snowball so far ahead of them if you find this at the right time. In the sideboard, we'll begin with Winter Orb, which functions just like Tangle Wire when you want that type of effect. It's just in a different way, but strategically the same thing. You want that type of effect, and it comes. You're taxing the opponent down while you flood the board seems really good. We've got a second Mastercore. We've got a Wellwisher whose uses are pretty obvious. We've got an Elvish Champion, which is not in all lists, which surprised me a little bit because it's a pretty powerful card, but I decided I want one, at least in the sideboard. I think Forest Walk is good utility. I like the Anthem effect. I like that it helps you race without needing to be, like, fully functional, right? Um, we also have Four of Naturalize. This card is everywhere in the format for obvious reasons. Goblin Sharpshooter to help Mastacore totally dominate the mirror, as well as other uh, small creature opponents. 
Collar of the Claw, we do have one main deck who I neglected to mention. We have two more in the sideboard. This is probably our best card against Pyroclasm or other sorcery speed board wipes that do not exile. Of course, this gives us a different dimension. We recoup all of our losses, and the stuff is beefier and of a different type than we're used to. So it's even good against something like Engineered Plague, right? That would otherwise be a static hate effect that we couldn't play into. Steely Resolve is good against spot removal. Very, very good, in fact, against spot removal. And Compost is good against black base spot removal and discard and other attrition that might otherwise grind us out well we can grind right back with a compost at the right time so there we go my friends that is my take on elves as always there are a lot of changes that could be made and take what i say with a bit of a pinch of salt because i am still very new to the deck and the format but we're about to have some games and uh maybe just a word of warning i think my play is probably pretty slow partially because elves have so many potential lines at any given time, and partially for the aforementioned reason. So if you want to watch it on one and one and a half or 1.25 speed or something, might not be the worst idea, but in any case, my friends, enjoy the games, and I will see you at the end of them for a wrap-up. All right, winning the die roll. Good luck, have fun, Dan, and this is a bra moment. Sweet hand, double cradle, no other land, got them all. It might not actually be the best hand anyway, the more I look at it. Um, he's down to six as well. Can we keep this one lander on the back of Birch Lore? Rangers and Wirewood Symbiote, which is actually kind of a non-bow. I think we're probably supposed to, um, and I'm just going to bottom collar of the claw and hope we draw a second land ideally or another one mana elf secondarily um, if rangers was a traditional mana dork I would be a lot happier or if symbiote was an elf I'd be a lot happier but um, and actually maybe I should have put squee back I just saw Squee in Survival and was like, those cards are good together. But, you know, if we get Survival up and running, then, like, Squee is something we can immediately tutor anyway. City of Brass. Okay. Another land, very nice. All right, we're just going to go for it. Priest of Titania. Wirewood Symbiote. Now we are protected against fire to some degree. He can still kill the priest, but he can't kill two things, hopefully. Is it a plow? Plow? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's kind of bad. Ooh, but he had to keep the one lander after the Mulda Six. Let's go. Nice. All right, so then there's no need to... So this is the beginning of our upkeep. So as long as we do it on his end step, which we would for mana reasons anyway, there's no need to main phase survival. Unless we were... No, we don't, we don't have... Okay. Yep. <clears throat> All right, he's operational now.
So we lose the symbiote. We bounce the Birch Lore Rangers. We discard Squee. So next turn off of three lands, potentially four if we draw, but we can plan for three. Birch Lore Rangers plus what? Should we just go for another Priest of Titania again? Or should we go for something a little more resilient? Like a Multani's Acolyte? I think I'm going to try to go for a Priest. But... About as newbie as it gets with Elves, right? So I don't necessarily have all of the second nature good ideas, right? All right, so we do have the fourth land. I'm just going to begin by discarding Squee to see what we can potentially put together. We could actually just go Priest, Birch, Lore Rangers, and then get a, another Wirewood Symbiote. That way we're protected against another two-for-one from another fire. And we have an efficient turn, and then next turn we can get something big off the Squee. So I think I'm going to do that. The only problem is we lose to a daze here, or we lose a spell to a daze, but I don't think we're generally supposed to play around daze. So I'm going to get Mountain, lead on Priest, so at least she will beat the daze. All right, fascinating, fascinating. Okay, third land. Still got five cards in hand. There's a werebear. Got it. And does he have another plow? He's got another threat, Nimble Mongoose. Okay. Uh, another forest is pretty rough. Pretty weak draw. Let's just see what we can do off of the squee here. So we're going to have one, two, three... No, one, two, three, four, five, six mana. I think we're just going to get a deranged hermit, just play around days with a big bomb. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and just try to do better with a draw next turn and also hope this is good enough, which honestly, I, I think it should be. Just get in with the Rangers, I guess. So we're going to have to pay Echo next turn unless we want to like be cute and bounce the Hermit, which is kind of cool. Really not sure what we're supposed to do, so I'm just going to untap. I'm not going to get too cute. Yes to squee. I mean, maybe we do just bounce the hermit. It's kind of cool. We don't really have the symbiote's protection this way, though. So I think I'm just going to pay the echo.
play a little more reactively with a symbiote. Tangle wire, that actually seems interesting. I think I'm going to go get like a, would it be Kyrian Ranger? for more titania mana. Sure, we can do that. I'm sure there are a million other things to do here. But this this beats days and allows us to use symbiote reactively. another fire in response. Okay. Interesting. So why don't we just float green with the Birch Lore Rangers? That's just pretty free no matter what we do. And then, do we save the Priest or the Hermit? I kind of want to save the Hermit. So if we untap here, bounce the hermit we can then float this mana fire will resolve then Kyrian Ranger's activated ability will fizzle but then we have six mana so we can just recast a Hermit, have a huge attack, still beat days, not worry about Tangle Wire, which I think is correct. And obviously making a ton of squirrels now too. Okay, Mana Leak we can't beat. Which is fair enough. I think I'm fine attacking with all here. All right, that was a super interesting turn. Squee the engine, squee OP. Multani's acolyte, huh? It's interesting, Tangle Wire would have beat the Mana Leak, but whatever. I think I might just lead on the Acolyte, see if it resolves, see what we draw, and then decide what to do with Squee from there. Another Acolyte, huh? Okay.
just gonna test the waters with the tangle wire here which I think is fairly game winning if it resolves we can still beat mana leak Alright, so I don't think he's going to be able to put two cards in the graveyard to make both of his things threshold with just one mana. I can't imagine what would be in the deck. Nothing I've seen. I don't think these decks play Gush or anything. I'm just going to send the Squirrels... And hope between that, the wide board, the tangle wire, and the pain of City of Brass, that that is good enough. We do end up missing on the squee value this turn. But I sure hope that we've done enough, at least in a game one, to get there. Mox Diamond. Nimble Mongoose. Getting closer to threshold, but not enough. GG, well played. Sorry about taking very long on my turns. I think that's to some degree natural with elves, and this is my uh, second game ever with elves. The first one, we did one warm-up game, not even a full match. So, cool. Goblin Sharpshooter is pretty interesting because it can kill Werebear. It cannot target Nimble Mongoose. But it can kill Werebear before Threshold, and I think a lot of the time in this matchup it'll come down before that. Um, Elvish Champion's interesting because it's good against Fire and Ice, kind of. And he has some forests. I think I'm supposed to play Steely Resolve for sure against Plow and Fire and Ice and whatever else is in there. I'm not sure about Winter Orb. His deck probably plays a two of Winter Orb, at least the Threshold decks I've seen do. I don't think I'm going to play the Sharpshooter game. I'm not going to try to control his board. Collar of the Claw is a thought against, uh, like, Pyroclasms and so forth, but we already do have one main deck. My instinct here is to sideboard relatively sparingly. I'm going to cut the Nantuko Vigilante, and there could be a million things that I get punished for that. I, I know it can ping a Mox Diamond, which isn't bad. I don't think that's the game I'm supposed to be playing, though. We'll cut Birchlore, and I think we're going to do this relatively conservative sideboarding. The only question is, do we replace, like, a... Maybe we try, like, a second Collar of the Claw over a single Acolyte. I think that's fine. I thought about cutting a Masticor. Yeah, maybe we'll cut Masticor, play Elvish Champion. I'm really not sure. I just don't mind Masticor as a 4-4 that can attack into their big stuff. But with the way that his deck can trade resources, I don't know if we'll have the fuel for it reliably. This hand's fine. It could easily get a couple things answered and then not really go anywhere, but... That's true of uh, most hands. 
the exception would be if it's like all dorks in a couple lands, and then it could just kind of go nowhere in a different way. He's going to mulligan again, which we obviously like. Survive Elves. <clears throat> it's a pretty cool archetype. When Tanglewire was bugged a little while ago, all the fading cards were bugged. That is obviously fixed now. I thought about how to play Elves without Tanglewire. I was just thinking it would be like a Winter Orb build. Um, main deck Winter Orb, which in some ways could actually be better. It's definitely not strictly worse, at least. At least. Dan going a little nuts here. T1 mocks Diamond into Mental Note. Planes and Pass. Interesting spot. We've got um, Priest of Titania, the highest upside play. It also beats Days. But having drawn a second Tangle Wire, I think I'm supposed to play the first one because the first one's going to be probably pretty good if it resolves, and if not, we've got another one where that came from. Much like myself, Dan has opted for Odyssey Basics, which I think is a fabulous choice in a deck that plays some Odyssey Threats. Slightly different choices from myself in terms of the actual specifics, but... Alright, does he have another mental note to complete the complete the circle? No, he doesn't, but... Still a nice turn for Dan, a nice play. But also a fine result for us, because we just get to jam another Tangle Wire now. One that will beat Days if we want, or we'll see what he does, we'll see what we draw. All right, so he shows us a non-island land. We know there's still island in hand, so two spells max. Lanny Elves. All right, that just makes me want to play Tangle Wire. Do we have any scope to get Mountain here? It's just for anger. It doesn't seem to punish us badly even if we start losing various things, so... All right, just hope we're not playing into a fire, and it's a great turn. We are. Unfortunate, but <clears throat> that just kind of evens out the mulligan, I guess. Right. Definitely makes the tangle wire a lot worse, though, that we lost both of our things. Well, now we need to draw a land or a one drop to have a turn that matters. And we do. Might lose or do a daze, but we got to go for it. All right, he looks a little flooded. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, I think we go for survival here. He didn't have permission last turn that we know of. Just going to make sure we get Squee in hand and then say go. Get that engine online and should be able to outgrind him on the back of that, given the circumstances. Obviously, I'm not writing the game off. I'm just saying from here, I think we're favored now that the survival resolved. And he's flooding like crazy. Unfortunate. All right, so in the face of his flood, I think maybe I'm going to play it conservative and get a symbiote. and thereby just kind of be able to protect the priest from removal. Honestly, that was probably the wrong call here for a couple different reasons, but we're still going for it. And I think we just say go here. I'm not trying to drag out the game, but I think if we just play a little reactively with Collar of the Claw in the back pocket, we probably can't really lose. Let the Squee engine really get going now that we have a bunch of mana production. Definitely could have played that more optimally, but... Yeah, we're just drawing survivals, though. It's pretty bad, I guess. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, potentially up to eight, nine. Plus 10 if we bounce a ranger, but really we don't want to use the symbiote proactively. So I think I'm just going to get the five drop of Hermit can beat Mana Leak that way. All right, so that's a big bomb. <clears throat> hmm. In the attack step, so we can't play as many tricks as we otherwise would. I guess we just let that go.
Pyroclasm a little scary, but that's what we have Collar of the Claw for. In theory. <laughs> second main we've got a 4-4 werebear which is pretty good yeah we're just drawing garbage off the top but the squee engine is pretty good can't complain and that's where we've got to start to see what we can do off of three mana now Probably don't want to play around another Pyroclasm. Well, here's what we could do, actually. I haven't really availed myself of this. We go get Anger, we discard Anger, and then we have another free play, but subsequent turns, more importantly, are more powerful. Problem is we don't have anything like great to do, so I'm just gonna get another symbiote. Just to be able to bounce collar of the claw basically and beat another pyroclasm like down the road. A little pressurized with the bears here. This is all assuming that, like, no grave hate comes along to eliminate Squee from the equation. I'm playing in such a way as to kind of assume that the Squee stuff is going to be repeatedly available to us. And we do need it, having drawn just, like, survivals and lands for the last few turns off the top. Another pyroclasm, dang, okay. At least we get to bounce something. That's obviously pretty rough. He still only got one card in hand. Alright, Kyrian Ranger is fine, but let's utilize Squee. If we didn't side out Birch Lore Rangers, we could go Forest, Birch Lore, Kyrian, Hold Up Collar of the Claw, which is interesting. Our stuff all now has haste. So maybe I just get another Priest of Titania. And if she resolves, we can then... Go a little crazy here, maybe. I'm not playing for a third Pyroclasm, so I'm going to discard Collar, and we're going to get Elvish Champion in a race.
please no third pyroclasm, Dan. <laughs> Accumulated knowledge. Another color of the claw, fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> We have all the mana. Guess we just go for the big guy here. Sorry. Just hard counter spell. Got it. Fair enough. <clears throat> okay, and he doesn't present a forest, unfortunately, so that's about all we got. I think it makes sense to play reactively with Collar for this exact moment. We're still pretty far ahead, but he's really putting together a good variety of uh, interaction points here under the circumstances. Sure, Mongoose. All right, I think I'm, uh, eh, one mana shouldn't make the difference. There is an incentive to cycle away Collar or the Claw, but we're actually kind of running out of, uh, like, decent quality creatures in our deck. I think we just need to kind of go for the Acolyte Chain and try to win. Finned Hornells, sure. Maybe we cycle them away. Ooh, that's a good one. And we could go further, but I think I'm just going to push four damage. Well, hmm. We could attack with everything. Or nothing. I'm going to attack with nothing. But we could un attack with everything and then do Collar of the Claw. But it seems hard to lose from here, right? <clears throat> so we pay both Echoes. We use the Floating... Mana, yes.
Yeah, I'm t- <laughs> the long game is long. <laughs> really running out of creatures it's kind of funny Ooh, we can't untap target creature, but we can still get a mana by bouncing the forest and targeting his werebear, which is the only targetable creature on the field. That's actually pretty funny. Can't do that. This should be good enough. Not necessarily for exactly lethal this turn, but generally is a way to get there. And it is for lethal. Okay. Good enough. I know he had the ability to target Wirewood Symbiote with removal, which I guess would have been an incentive to play another one, but I was thinking hold up Collar of the Claw or play Tangle Wire, probably a little bit better overall. All right, my friends. Good luck. Have fun. Sorry, I was just reading a text that came in. We have won the die roll. We're against Bobby, and we're with elves. I'm going to keep We Lack a, a real payoff, but the hand functions. If we draw survival, we've already got the squee rolled up. If we draw a big bomb and we're uncontested, we can hard cast it. We have functionality in terms of making land drops in the face of, you know, removal or permission. I know that we are against tricks, and that's all I know, which is a combo deck that, as far as I understand, tries to donate you illusions of grandeur. Um, but I'm very inexperienced against it. Wirewood Symbiote, sure. We're going to play the Symbiote if he beats this with a daze, that is what it is, but he does not. Um, I'm a little worried about a red splash for Fire and Ice, like we saw from Dan. And thus, I am going to try to protect the priest with a Symbiote, and indeed it's a red splash. Okay, so as I was saying, I've seen, just from glancing at lists, 
Never played with or against Trix, but from glancing at lists, there's Mono Blue, there's Blue Red, there's Grixis, and there's decks that splash white um, as well in various forms. And um, basically, from my very limited understanding, it's whether you want to be... Okay... Bounce the Priestess. Lose the Symbiote, but it turned out to be a good draw. Obviously, we don't get two for one this way. I mean, I think we're just supposed to flood the board. It sucks to be drawing just more dorks, but this insulates us somewhat against another Fire and Ice. I'm definitely not playing around main deck Pyroclasm. If he has that, I'm calling shenanigans. <laughs> it's really unfortunate, to be honest. But maybe the weenies will get there. You never know. Accumulated knowledge. All right, so so far it looks like a straight blue-red version, which is the version that I kind of... I would probably play if I were trying it out for the first time. Tangle Wire is a good one. Just going to main phase it. That way, if we need to pay for a mana leak or something, we can. If we don't, then we can just swing with everything. Every point of damage does matter here with respect to the clock. So in that regard, finding any spell that drew out a counter spell, forced him to do that maybe instead of something else, seems pretty decent. <clears throat> This would be a pretty interesting way to get over the line if we do just attack with 1-1s one -ones a few times. It's too bad we can't cast Squee. He would be a resilient threat. A threat with a recursion. Uh-oh, so there's the Illusions of Grandeur. It's the card obviously we didn't want to see. So what's that card in Antuko? The naturalize on a body? Well, we don't have it, but we have Survival of the Fittest. Let's go. We can tutor it. We'll obviously want to make sure it works before we go in on it. Um, where are you? Nantuko Vigilante. If turned face up, destroy artifact or enchantment. Cast face down for three, more for two. I guess that's the move. Never used this card before, bear with me, but I think we're getting there. <clears throat> And he's conceding to that. Wow, okay. Fair enough. He did have another turn, right? But all good. I'm sure he was probably flooded. That is unfortunate, if so. So I'm calling just plain blue-red. Therefore, I'm also certainly going to play around... Pyroclasm. So Collar of the Claw seems good against Pyroclasm generally, and also potentially against Permission as well, uh, just to be able to flash in pressure on the unstep in one way or another. I think Winter Orb is pretty solid here as well. We do want all four copies of Naturalize, though. Um, 
Elvish Champion is like, like I said, against Dan, decent against Fire and Ice, but here he doesn't have forests, and there's way too much else to bring in. Steely Resolve, I think, is interesting. Um, I don't rate this as highly as I did against Dan because he's a combo deck. He doesn't have as much interaction. I think I want to play the the prison game and attack the, the stuff with Naturalize, but we really dilute our clock by a fair amount like this. And, like, at least a second caller of the claw to have more game against Pyroclasm is probably legit. On the other hand, like, if we're natural, if we've just got a bunch of naturalizes, are we really going to lose? Yeah, unlikely, I guess. He could have alternate win cons. It's really tough to say. I think I'm going to trim a little bit of the more fringy stuff. With Winter Orb coming in, I don't want to trim my, like, explosive stuff, though. We can cut Granger if we're cutting Anger. I really don't know that this is the way to do it, I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't really want to lose a Deranged Hermit, do I? It's a pretty good clock. And it's pretty good value, but it just dies horribly to Pyroclasm, and it's clunky. We could just make it kind of easy on ourselves and play without Winter Orbs. I think Winter Orb is pretty sweet, though. Why don't we play with just a Singleton Winter Orb? We just gotta cut something to submit before we lose our... <laughs> we lose sideboarding to the clock. All right, totally reasonable keep. We don't have any outs to the combo, but you're not supposed to really mull for these. I think we're the one who asks the question to at least the same degree as he does. And then, of course, we're just kind of zipping through the deck a little bit, in theory. Guy's Cradle. So we could try to lead on Acolyte, and if it resolves, then play Cradle and play Survival, and that's kind of like the highest. That's like using the most mana this turn, but I actually don't think I'm gonna. I actually think I'm just gonna try to jam a Survival. He's probably got a Counterspell, but I think getting Squee going early is the best play. Like, yeah, the best play. And we are beating a couple things like days this way. <clears throat> All right, no need to main phase the survival, as far as I know. Interesting. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to go get Nantuko Vigilante to have it in the back pocket. We do have, like, a slowish hand, though. There's a real good incentive to get just something like Priest of Titania or whatever. Are we going to main phase an Impulse? I wonder if that means he lacks a land drop, or I wonder if that means he has the land drop and he's looking for, like, a bolt or something. I'm not sure. Okay, there's Priest. Huh. 
still beating a daze here, so let's just start on her. She resolves, okay. I think we pass here. We're holding up Collar of the Claw. <clears throat> and on step, we can squee. In the event of him not really doing too much. I think we're representing so much mana next turn that it's kind of unlikely he does nothing here. But of course that depends greatly on his hand and even aside from that I could be wrong. It feel, also feels a little weird to play around Pyroclasm with only two creatures on the field. I think generally you wouldn't, but I don't know. This is a sweet Mirage Island. <clears throat> All right, then we go for Caller. Maybe he's got Counter Spell. Days, okay. Fair enough. So that was a good turn for Bobby for sure, because he interacts twice at important points. He uh, two for ones us with Pyroclasm, and we didn't get to use Squee. So let's see how we can rebuild. We can go Forest, Acolyte, Cradle for one. Probably just get another Priest of Titania here. Not worry about another Pyroclasm. But then we're not double spelling. So maybe we just go get Wirewood Symbiote. Or a Mana Dork. Depending on whether or not we do want to play around Pyroclasm. So if we go land... All right, yeah, let's just get a dork. So we're still doing fine on cards. We do... We definitely don't want to see another Pyroclasm, but... Just begin with a squee activation, see what we can see, and try to plot our turn from there. All right, so if we get like a symbiote, we well, we should get either symbiote or collar of the claw. Hmm. If we're trying to play around another Pyroclasm, which it's not clear that we should be, even. But let's say we get, like, a Priest of Titania, tap the Cradle to player. I think I'm going to do Wirewood Symbiote here. See if this resolves. Try to attack with the Acolyte. Factor Fiction in response, okay. <sighs> Counter 
counterspell on its own? I guess. He takes the three lands and the medallion. All right, let's get a crack in here. And then we're not really uh, too, too worried about another pyroclasm. I just don't read him for it, although he did dig a lot deeper toward it. And then just to use the mana, basically, we're going to get rid of a Findhorn Elf and find... Yeah, I guess another claw collar. It won't work for this exact turn, but <clears throat> generally not a bad one to have in the back pocket. I think we have enough pressure with Vigilante as a way to blow up enchantments and stuff. Huh. Fascinating indeed. Here comes Sapphire Medallion, I bet. Uh-huh. Not another pyroclasm. Don't do it, Bobby. Don't you dare. <laughs> I didn't really do the math on whether Medallion plus a guaranteed other land drop would let him do the combo all in one turn. It still doesn't, right? I think it's three for a reduced illusions and two for a reduced donate. And if I'm correct, which I think I am, then like playing the Vigilante to ping the Sapphire Medallion doesn't really make sense because he just plays a land and hard casts them both next turn. But I think we might want to get that down because you morph is at instant speed, right? Okay. So he's taking care of the symbiote. And the Findhorn might as well bounce Findhorn. So no more Acolyte Symbiote loops. Winter Orb? That's a nut. That's a nut draw, right? It's got to be. Right, let's try to put this elf back down, which is free. Should have used forest there, technically. All right, let's just go for the orb. <clears throat> if it resolves, great. If not, we... It does, yep, okay. Use the floating mana to cycle squee. And I think I'm just getting and casting another symbiote. Adds to pressure, it protects a crucial piece of the board against uh, another Pyroclasm or Fire and Ice. And now, with Winter Orb hitting the Sapphire Medallion is somewhat more appealing, but...
Hmm. Okay. 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 Interesting. So four, five mana just from lands, six, seven from creatures. If we had like a naturalize in hand, our play patterns would be so different. I think I'm just attacking with all the start. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, let's say go here. It's really pick your poison in terms of what to play around. Yeah, he had the extra land drop anyway, so... Well, still, getting the Vigilante down made some sense, actually. Probably should have done that, but I just kind of read him for permission anyway. I don't know. I'm happy enough to just flash in Collar of the Claw and step here for pressure, or obviously after a Pyroclasm. Yeah. He's got it. Yeah, that was probably a punt to play the, the Vigilante. Or to not play the Vigilante, rather. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Cradle's going to make five. We're going to pay two for illusions. So I guess we just get another Priest of Titania to go nuts next turn. I think I'm doing this right, but I don't even know if... Uh... So I'm pretty sure the idea here is I can't get rid of it now, otherwise I take the 20. Okay, that's free.
I almost certainly punted this, so my bad. I think if I had played the Vigilante, and to be fair, if he didn't have a counter spell, we'd be in good shape. Not sure what we can do here. Maybe we want to start trying to untap the priest here. Do like a Kyrian Ranger or something seems fine. So we can pay. We can pay. We can do that. And then with the floating mana, we might as well use Squee. If I still had Anger in the deck, but I don't have a Mountain anyway, so yeah, maybe not. Hey, there's the Mountain. Okay. I thought I had a Priest of Titania this whole time. I clearly don't. That's a bra moment. <laughs> what am I doing? This is too complicated for me, guys, clearly. Whatever. We'll just see if this is enough. Obviously, we can pay for this upkeep for quite a while now. So I guess we're still mostly afraid of Pyroclasm, for which reason I probably should have not attacked quite with everything and tried to set up a backup plan for that, but clearly I've given up playing optimally a few turns ago. So um, Bobby's got a dig for the fact or fiction... Chain of Vapor, Fire and Ice. Do it something like that. And that's that. Definitely didn't deserve the win there. Um, I guess I should have split the chains to give him a chance not to do that, but like I said, I don't think we deserve the win there. Um, so a few things occur to me. Wellwisher can help beat that card specifically. Although you think, like, if you're doing enough to repeatedly activate Wellwisher, that probably things are likely to go your way anyway. So I'm not too sure about that one. Um, yeah, didn't draw any of the Naturalizes, didn't use mine in Tuco Vigilante optimally. I'm just going to cut an Acolyte, play another Winter Orb on the play. And see if this same type of strategy gets us there. I'm sure the deck gave me the tools to win that one. Uh, again, unless he had permission ready for the Vigilante, in which case he might have kind of had us locked up. We get to go, we get to go curving out here with a hand like this. Um, none of my hands have been, like, perfectly balanced, but none of them... I can complain about either, you know? The third tangle wire, huh? That's really awkward. I'm going to play one and actually really, really, really hope he dazes it because, like, I can't afford to play out Priest of Titania and lose both them to a Fire and Ice. Or like an Anal or something. Okay, this is great for us. Not that it's the wrong play. By he says not today, Satan. 
That's true. I, I should have used the psychological edge and been more confident with that play because Bobby absolutely despises Tangle Wire. But we can't play out into a fire and ice or a pyroclasm with this hand. And now that we've drawn Symbiote, we can. He might have another daze, but... Alright, so now we need to draw Squee, ideally, or just like creatures in general. Alright, he's tapping out for the Medallion. Ugh, another survival so bad, dude. I guess we get one of them down, though, and attack with a symbiote is our best line. That was such a window to go totally and completely nuts with our deck. We just drew... Whoa, hibernation? Hibernation. That's super good. Nice. So. All right. Do we have any cool lines? So if we... Untap return we can then at least float this mana and go get squee to start the value chain which I think will be crucial to winning the game eventually. But we kind of need to draw, like, a land now for it to be a decent turn, and we do. That's pretty lucky, I'm not going to lie. Rewards us for accumulated knowledge. Sure, man, Sapphire Medallion showing up huge here. He's cast Days, Hibernation, and AK, and a Medallion, under a pretty early Tangle Wire. Definitely nice. Whew. Whew. Well, we don't have anger in the deck anymore, so I guess it's actually better to not get Mountain. And I am going to delay the Priest for a turn because it is just crucial to start getting a new card every turn, I think, with Squee. We'll just get a Lanny Ls for now, that's fine. Because we got tempoed out in a couple places, and we've also kind of lost a lot of our oomph. And Bobby's just, just casting so much off this medallion, it's crazy. We do have another Tangle Wire, which is nice, but we'd be operating a lot more comfortably if he didn't have that medallion, obviously.
Always, yes, always yield to Lord Squee. Mmm. Mmm, these draws are painfully bad. Okay. I'm going to begin with a tangle wire and see what happens. It gets countered. Got it. So he could definitely combo us here, and we'd be in big trouble. Just got to hope he doesn't have it rolled up. He has had a lot of selection. He's also had a lot of really good interaction. It'd just be a tough draw for us to beat if he does have the combo ready to roll. So now I guess we've got to get Nantuko Vigilante just so we don't get comboed again in the same way. Just play it out and have it ready to go. Kyrian Ranger. We'll lead there. And he knows about this, so we'll just go for it, I guess. All right. So I guess we kind of just pressure with what we have. Have Collar of the Claw for Pyroclasm. And be ready to flip that. And we have enough ways to untap that I'm going to pressure as hard as I can. Don't think it's correct to hit the medallion here. Could definitely be wrong. If we had landed the third tangle wire, the third one we attempted, the second one that would have hit the field, totally different story, right? Cities of Brass. Man, this deck is very complicated to play. I'm sure it becomes easier when a lot of the lines become second nature. But even so, at any given point, 
you're likely to have just a just a massive variety of options as long as you're functional at least i feel so thin so like spread so thin with my sideboarding it might not certainly be correct i'm uh i'm not really rewarded for it because i've been able to tutor and make a ton of mana but i've shaved some of the top end and and all that and i put in four naturalize and haven't seen one yet So I'm definitely feeling, okay, hmm. Okay, Chain of Vapor. And then do we want to bounce Sapphire Medallion by sacking a land? I think we're just letting this resolve. I think I'm going to go for it. Why not? Yeah, that's rough. Okay. Untap. Bounce a forest. Then he bounces Kyrian Ranger. I don't know if I understand that, but I'm not going to do anything. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. Because then we only make two mana off of Priest. But we can then at least... Do something. I think I'm going to cycle Symbi out looking for just a little more raw power. We can't even hard cast a deranged hermit necessarily. Definitely a little bit rough. Maybe just a Multani's Acolyte here. Just try to rebuild in pressure. And hope he doesn't have combo cards. Very intense turn. Interesting stuff. Will it will I prove to be punished for my not playing Nantuko G two and for playing it G three? That would be a little hard uh I'd feel a little hard done by, but it's, it's very possible I'd just be wrong in both instances, you know? Certainly I think I was wrong in G2. Ooh, Tanglewire? Huh. You don't say. It's not even that great for us, but... Or is it? <laughs> it's hard to say. Real hard to say. I think I'm going for it. Tangle wire number four. Why not? We have come this far. Strangely punished for sacking a forest. Another Sapphire Medallion. All right, the Tangle Wire is probably worse for me now than it is for him, but fair enough.
I'm just trying to rebuild in ways that are resilient to removal, basically. I think it's fine. Could also, I didn't really use the Kyrian Ranger trick that turn, so I probably missed a trick. Maybe at least missed a point of damage or something. Hopefully it doesn't matter. really just want all the pressure I can get right now. Let's play an Acolyte, see what happens. Findhorn Elves, huh? So we can... I think we're supposed to do this at least main phase, untap, bounce, not miss out on this forest mana. All right, then we're just gonna say go. We have a huge variety of lines now. I'm so sorry for my clock. I'm so I'm so slow with the elves. <clears throat> sorry for the long turns. So obviously we can do the obvious thing and still cycle squee while playing Collar of the Claw. We're also representing Naturalize, which is somewhat important, but I suppose if he has the combo rolled up, he probably just goes for it. And I don't think we have any answers if that's the case. Again, like not drawing a Naturalize in either game has made our lives so much harder than it would otherwise be. Either way, this is a this is a super intense game, really well played from Bobby, and uh, very challenging for me. I've had fun, though. Um, there's a Pyroclasm, okay. So we're floating all the manas. We're going to untap here, and we bounce either Acolyte or Ranger. Float there, let it resolve. <clears throat> And that's the concession. GG is well played, man. Awesome games. Um, I didn't deserve the win game two with my hesitation over Nantuko Vigilante, and I didn't get it. Uh, but we get over the line in a very close one game three. You know, if he had the combo, we were cold to it. So really could have gone either player's way. But great stuff.
All right, friends, we are against Andreas on the rock, who will take a mulligan. We, if we keep this hand, have effectively mulliganed for the most part with the double cradle. But I'm still going to keep it. I think it'd, it'd be a six we definitely keep. So I think it's fine. And it's not strictly a mulligan, like if there's a non-targeted discard effect. Or if he's playing, like, a one of Dust Bowl, something like that. I don't expect the rock to be a Wasteland deck from what I've seen. But there could be a redundancy with Cradle. And also you can tap one, then play the other and tap that for an explosive turn, right? So it's... It's far from a strict mulligan, um, but in any case, we are really hoping not to lose whatever creature we play first, because we need the Cradle operational, and generally, of course, we don't like to lose our elves now, do we? I'll play Lanny Elves to start, just looking for the most explosive possible start, because it is, as I say, kind of bad if we lose it either way. We're going to get Duress. That's unfortunate, because we were going to make the Duress whiff before our first draw step, and now he gets probably the best standalone card in our hand. The real payoff for all of our endeavor, for all of our elf balling. Uh, so now we're hoping for no Diabolic Edict or Chainer's Edict or something like that. Smother. Okay, well... I didn't ask for no smother, to be fair. Priest of Titania, we cannot play, but we can make two one drops, thankfully. So these two cards are a little non Bowie. Um, I think I've observed that in a previous match. I'm playing this one on a different day than I played the other two, so my memory is a little rusty. Um, and Virtual Rangers is not in every deck, but I like it as a one of. And Tuco Vigilante, interesting. All right, we've got a nice payoff waiting in the wings with Hermit. We're obviously about to catch a beating from this 4-4. You don't really like to see that. We're just going to take the hit for now. There are tricks we can play, I suppose, with blocking and bouncing and stuff like that but I think for now we want to keep the wide board. He's only got one card left in hand. <clears throat> Not a very efficient use of the priest, but that is what it is. Yeah, I guess at the moment we're just kind of racing. Trying to decide whether I want to just deploy the Vigilante as well. For three mana, it's a little bit rough. Obviously, we can just play the Cradle, get it down. Have that kind of trick in the back pocket. I mean, if we're racing, we might as well, right? I do worry about, like, a Dust Bowl turn four. That might be reason enough not to. All right, 
right, let's just attack. All right, he doesn't appear to have removal, so he could, of course, draw one removal spell. But when we're considering how to block the Bailoff if he attacks, I don't think we should play around two removal spells, right? All right, no attack. Fair enough. All right, looks like he's just kind of flooded. All right. Hmm. <clears throat> I didn't think closely enough about that. We could have bounced Hermit pretty easily with Symbiote there. Let's do it now. So definitely not the most efficient way to go about it, but... He knows about our remaining cradle. <clears throat> I'm just going to get in with the squirrels now. A pretty big swing. We're going to lose one. And then next turn we'll have overwhelmingly lethal. Throwing away some birds, or at least one bird. Got it. So now we can consider also bouncing Multani's Acolyte with Symbiote, which now that we're definitely out of gas, we're supposed to. Um, which is arguably, again, something I could have done on his previous end step, but I would have done on this upcoming end step. Um, so, obviously, he just flooded. He had a couple key pieces of interaction in the beginning, and then, like, a good top-end card like Bailoth, and then just nothing after that, whereas we just kept going. So, um, I do, of course, suspect it to be much harder post-side generally, irrespective of that particular progression, because I am planning on trying to beat an Engineered Plague, which is going to be tough. Um, but Steely Resolve is good against some removal. I don't actually know if we're definitely supposed to play it. We know he has Smother, but it doesn't help against Discard or Engineered Plague or against Sacrifice Effects. Or against Pernicious Deed, actually. Compost is interesting. I'm definitely going to play Compost. That seems great. Um, and then Elvish Champion for Forest Walk. Collar of the Claw. Definitely decent. And then some number of Naturalizes. Because, again, E-Plague is the worst, but he could play a Masticor. He could play Recurring Nightmare. Uh, it hits Pernicious Deed. It's going to feel weird to have too many of these, so I'm not just throwing those in straight away, but we're going to have some number of them. I really like Anger. Uh, I don't know if I'm generally supposed to cut it as often as I have in this league, but I feel, uh, you know, if we have a large amount of sideboarding to do, then maybe we cut stuff like that. Masticor can go... Maybe we don't really play the prison game so much with Tangle Wire. Taking it long can help him. I think I'll try without it. We haven't really gone without it yet. I guess we can cut Granger if we're cutting Anger, and then we can play like three Naturalize, the second Caller. 
And do we want to play like a cheeky one of Winter Orb? Is this better as a one of than a single Tangle Wire? <clears throat> I'll go for it. It's a little arbitrary, but I don't. I think four Naturalize might be too many. I think three Collar of the Claw might be too many. It's either that or a one of Steely Resolve. We'll play. We'll try the Steely Resolve actually. All right. Many, many, many different permutations that we could have ended up with as far as a post side 60 there, but I think this is at least one of them that's decent, and you can't ask for a better hand than this, really, against a mid range deck. It's just functional and it's got a lot of gas. I mean, it walks directly face first into Engineered Plague, but even that, I mean, we've got can tripping elves at least. That can hopefully not get blown out quite so hard and also dig us toward our outs. Wall of Blossoms. All right, so our hand doesn't really leave us with a ton of choice besides to play into the plague, which I think is probably correct anyway. We can split the difference with like a priest and an acolyte rather than two acolytes, which is probably playing a little bit too scared of plague. And also would be awkward with the echoes, right? So we're going to make him have the plague. It's going to be real bad still if he does, but... Again, not as bad as it could be. I'm going to pre-type the no. Nope, I'm not. Well, I did, but I'm not going to send it. Yavamaya Elder. Great card, but not one we care yeah, all that much about. All right, well, I'm going to go all in here. It's literally like our hand doesn't allow us to do anything else, right? And it's just so impressive <laughs> overall <laughs> that like you just kind of have to do it all right that was a real elf balling there's no payoff and there's no hope if op draws a plague or you know even a pernicious deed we can get one big swing in before we lose everything um Plague one time. No plague. We're cracking the elder. I can six here, right? I was just double checking. What this board state is missing besides a payoff is also a wirewood symbiote to protect the board, but also bounce acolytes for more gasoline. Oh, he's putting up the walls. He's seeing a lot of new cards. That's what's really scary here. Deranged Hermit, let's go.
Can I pay the Echo in advance? Can I pay my... Can I make a higher payment on my bill? Alright, so even though this is not the biggest deal in the world, we're still going to do it. We're going to untap here just to get another swing in. And can we fade the hoser? Should have said no plague two times. Pernicious deed, okay. So we're going to be left with Deranged Hermit only that we can't pay the Echo for. Is that right? Um, there's not much we can do. Whoa. Nice one. All right. Can't quite make it, my friend. Sorry. All right. It's actually a, a relatively interesting draw. As far as rebuilding goes. Obviously, he can answer this with a pretty wide variety of cards, right? But now any creature can become a squee. And then we'd just like get a one drop just to have something to play. Okay, never mind. He's got another deed. And a Mishra's Factory. Interesting. Not a card I've seen in rock lists that I recall. All right, so never mind that. Well, we can naturalize the factory, if nothing else, assuming he doesn't lead on a discard spell. Naturalize would have been not even very helpful, because at no point did he expose the deed without cracking it, right? Okay. So he animates here, and he can sack that to Recurring Nightmare. So we can either hit the factory. No, we can't, actually. We have to hit the Nightmare in response, which is what I would do anyway. I'm just making sure I'm going over all my options. Yeah, we want to take care of this. All right, so pretty well timed naturalized, but we're still in a whole lot of trouble, obviously. They don't expect us to get there. Especially with Treetop Village showing up. If we were on the play, though, with that progression, we would have done it. Some suitably Golgari lands for sure. You guys know I'm the biggest fan of the old border stuff, but these are some nice pieces and thematic without any doubt. And basically the whole rest of his list is newer border stuff as well, so I respect the consistency for sure. And I think we're going to go ahead and scoop it up. Blastoderm plus Beats. Plus another land off the top means we are well and truly gotten, my friends. So, hmm. 
Tangle Wire, Winter Orb type stuff, especially Tangle Wire, probably a little more appealing on the play, right? But once again, what to cut is a little tough. I think maybe it's a little too hard to play reactively with Collar of the Claw in this matchup. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that final steely or that one steely resolve. It it feels weird because it's like, why is it in the deck if it's not in a matchup like this? And maybe it shouldn't be in the sideboard, right? Maybe there are better options. But the rock specifically, with so many sweepers and so many edict effects, I think it's just probably the worst black based mid range opponent for it. But yeah, maybe it could just be a second compost and then like a something else. Um, yeah, I like, I like a few tangle wires in here, hopefully try to do the same thing while locking him out, basically. He does operate a whole lot at sorcery speed, from what I can tell. Um, yeah, about three naturalized looks about right still. Let's run it back, try to take game three. Hmm. This hand's pretty poor. But is it good enough to keep? So would we keep it on a Malda 6 with losing a Cradle? That'd be, I mean, I guess, yeah. But, oh god, is it is it underwhelming? But if, if that's the heuristic, like if we'd keep it on a Mulda 6, just barely, I guess we should keep it here. It's so punishing to mulligan in a matchup like this. We just have to hope that the top deck provides, like we have the platform for most non-land draws to be really good here. And Wirewood Symbiote to protect against blowouts, so I guess... Was actually a fantastic draw. So now we can loop that guy for value. Not have to pay the echo. <clears throat> Pernicious Deed, we got the Naturalized. Things are starting to come together. Okay. So we do have to hit the deed. But we might as well start here, see what we can see. Priest of Titania, huh? getting there. I mean, I'm I'm still always kind of living in fear of the many, many blowout cards, but I think pretty rewarded for the keep at least, and that's that's something. All right. 
right, there goes our little piddling aggro plan. Totally stonewalled now. Fair enough. Ooh, yes, we're definitely playing compost. We just really, really got to fade another pernicious deed now. But, yeah, that card's going to be pretty sweet, I think. Yeah, I mean, we hold off on the Hermit this way, but it's Ranger into Compost into Priest. Block the beast for days, it's basically, I think we're solidly favored if he doesn't find Engineered Plague or a second Pernicious Deed. If he does find those, um, we have still some good things going for us, but especially Plague would be horrible. And again, it doesn't kill our Symbiotes. There's a Deed, though. All right, so just bouncing the acolyte at least right away, and then we'll see if he has the second land. Or the, yeah, the, the fifth land. Oh, mm, I played right into the Cabal Therapy. That's rough. But at least we'll be drawn off it. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't really on my radar. Not gonna lie. Lesson learned. Obviously, you can flash back the Therapy to hit our Hermit now, too. But we are drawing off of Compost. Interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely should have been more patient with that. Always yes, I will always draw. Thank you very much. It's a bad draw, but hey. And he doesn't aggressively flash back. All right, so we just kind of have to play patiently around the deed, which is definitely bad for us, but not as bad as it would be if he was probably making all his land drops, I guess, because he has a tension with that too. Fascinating, okay. Spirit monger? Whoa, all right. I was more afraid of some kind of hoser on a stick, but... All right, so we do get to draw off the compost first, and then we get to... Try to rebuild from here. 
Nothing we can do with the mana. And a duress that will whiff. Beautiful. He does get to consider a Cabal Therapy for either a double Kyrian Ranger or whatever the other highest impact card he thinks is. But then he's down to Beastlessness. Ooh, missed the attack? I assume so. Maybe playing around Anger in a hasty swing for lethal. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know what to make of that, but Multani's Acolyte off the top seems good. Alright, we're just dumping the hand, boys and girls. Let's do it. I actually think we get survival down. Have we made a land drop this turn? We have not. We can play the cradle and go nuts too, but I don't really know if we need to. Let's just do this first and see. I'll turn you into Squee. Oh, we can't because we did the forest trick. All right, that's fine. So we're just kind of holding up the Squee activation, seeing what we need out of it. I definitely could have gone a little crazier with the second cradle, though. Just kind of, I kind of lapped myself, if you will. All right, well, that's annoying, but we at least get this value out of it. Um, <clears throat> so, like, do we try to plan for him having nothing, and or do we try to play a little more defensively with, like, a... I don't think he has another hoser. I think we're just supposed to try to race. I'm going to get... Elvish Champion, which I think kind of splits the difference between something that's playable if we're going off uncontested, and very good if, if so, and also if he has, if the worst case scenario happens, you know, it's not, we can survive Engineered Plague on the back of this card potentially, for example. Might as well get Squee back, right? Oh, we draw Kamal anyway. Interesting. All right. Let's begin with Priest. Elvish Champion. I don't think I'm playing around a smother. I think we would have seen it by now if he had it right now. We could get blown out with an attack, though, for sure. Thinking it's slightly better to get the Hermit down here. But you could go either way for sure.
All right, no smother. Very nice. Okay, he plays a land. There's another pernicious deed, bruh. And no symbiotes this time. But Elvish Champion and Deranged Hermit will survive? Can pay for the echo this time. What a match this is. Survival is a potentially good draw. We'll see how it all goes. Forest walking past the beast is pretty cool. I'm feeling highly rewarded for the selection of Elvish Champion, not gonna lie. No snuff out, okay. <laughs> this is about as intense as it gets, my friends. Oh, well, there's his land. I think he has Spirit Monger still in hand, if I'm not wrong. It's actually pretty horrifying at this stage. It's gonna erase us pretty darn well. But maybe maybe we don't even bother with survival, maybe we just play Kamal. We'll see. Naturalize too late for you, so Yeah, it's just gotta be Kamal, right? What can we do with survival? Squee. Then with three mana? I mean, if we had another Elvish Champion to get, it'd be GG, right? That'd be pretty cool. Um, but I don't think we have anything that's too directly impactful. I'm just going to play this guy. Alright, so he's got 12 attacking power on board. He can also gain 4 life. So we have to really take a moment to figure out blocks. But first, obviously, wait to see what he does. Engineered Plague? Okay. Yikes, dude. I think tapping Mishra's factory might not have been correct. But that's the game. Okay. GG, well played. That was so good, so intense. I hadn't done the math yet, but I guess we are still just swinging for lethal with Kamal, um, despite the life gain of the beast. But that, I guess Andreas did the math faster than I did. Great games, man. That was super intense, back and forth, well piloted. And uh, elves taking it to the house, just barely. GG's. All right, friends. Well, that was some elf balling. Thank you a ton for watching. Thanks to everybody whose views and support have made all of this possible. Leave your comments below, of course, and a like to support this content and help it become more visible. Thank you again to our opponents. Dan and Bobby are basically people who have been on the pre-modern journey with me from day one. I almost called them pre-modern veterans, but we're all still about three weeks into the format, so none of us is anything like a veteran yet. But thanks to those guys for coming back for another round of games here, and thank you as well to Andreas, who not only helped start off the whole pre-modern thing, as far as my community is concerned anyway, but also for joining on his channel debut as an opponent as well, and they were some fantastic games. I think... Having played the matchups, my initial suspicions are confirmed that Threshold is 
probably something that leans toward favorability for elves, maybe in a pretty significant way, but the presence of red for fire and ice in Pyroclasm equalizes things a lot, with elves still maybe being a narrow favorite, and I would actually apply the exact same logic to tricks. If I was against, just from what I've seen, never having faced them like a mono blue tricks, or maybe a blue-black tricks, or some of the white splashing ones, I would feel pretty darn favored with elves, but the presence of main deck fire and ice and sideboard pyroclasm and heavy numbers really put the fear of god into the elves, but we were able to overcome all of those hate cards. And then with Rock, I think that's more of an even matchup. It's actually one that frightens me a bit, especially with the hate being just about as powerful, if not more so, than Fire and Ice and Pyroclasm. We're talking about, of course, Pernicious Deed and Engineered Plague, both of which we had to fight our way through, especially multiple deeds were nice. The plague could have blown us out hard in a couple windows. It didn't arrive until it was just a little bit too late. MVP of the Rock matchup was probably Elvish Champion, just for the manner in which it enabled us to survive Engineered Plague at the end, and also Forest Walk after a massive board wipe for some repeated damage. And indeed, it's higher CMC helping to survive the board wipe. It even, if I recall correctly, helped be a second body to pay the Echo on Gaia's cradle for the forest walking hermit, which was just all just barely enough. It was really, really close. We just got over the line. He was about to turn the corner on us pretty hard with Spirit Monger in Ravenous Baloth, but we do just enough. Um, the survival engine was very good in other matchups. Rock disrupted us too much for it to be online too, too much in the third match, but against the blue decks, Squee was definitely really sweet. I even see why people play multiple copies of him just to make sure if anything happens to that first copy, you have the engine still available to tutor. That is just how powerful that synergy is in a format like this, but I really also have to just say the core of the deck performs so admirably it's unreal. Multani's Acolyte was awesome in the pressure with cantripping roll just as intended, but also in conjunction with being able to bounce it, Wirewood Symbiote, Multani's Acolyte best friend, that was definitely really nice, and also Symbiote generally helping to play around fires, helping to play around board wipes, really preventing... We got X for one quite often enough, let's just put it that way. Symbiote preventing it from being even worse. We saw a lot of the pluses and minuses of Gaia's Cradle. It's a surprising amount of starting hands that will have only a Cradle in it that I've found. You do have to send those back. You do end up with clunky multiples, but the card is just such an enabler. It is absolutely incredible. I even missed a window or two or maybe three to really aggressively use the second Cradle over the course of these games, and it would have been even more insane had I maybe decided it was optimal, or even seen the line to go all in on explosivity, if that's a word I can use. Other than that, um, elves performing about as intended. The prison elements continue to be impressive in some windows, less so in others. One of the harder aspects of the deck to grok. It seems easier to trim this than it does a lot of other cards, if for no other reason than the fact that, you know, these cards all directly synergize with other. And Tangle Wire synergizes with the deck as a whole, but less so when you're reducing the consistency with which you can cheat its downside and make it asymmetrical, right? In a lot of my gold fishing that I did just to get a feel for the deck or the couple other games I've played off-camera, Anger's been awesome. Anger lets you kind of out of nowhere have one of the most explosive turns imaginable, taking the opponent by surprise. You can use an Anger in the yard with a mountain on the field. You get the squee chain going. You need resources in hand for this, but you can tutor a Priest of Titania first thing. She comes down with haste, and then the world is your oyster from there. So didn't get to see that in this league, but I do think this card's in here for a good reason. I do still like it, even though we trimmed it a lot. This league, um, Collar of the Claw was also huge against Bobby in particular, if I recall correctly, and you gotta shout that out. I like having access to all these naturalizes, although it definitely was a sweat to not see them against the combo deck, that is for sure. And uh, Compost was definitely pretty cool, probably crucial to our rebuild in some ways. Steely Resolve is probably the card I have the least amount of confidence in as things stand right now 
And then Master Core is a little bit tough just because, like, yes, it's a super powerful card. Yes, it's an awesome mana sink. But often, like, I'm, I haven't really used it yet. And I'm thinking I'm usually about out of cards by the time I would get to really take advantage of it. So I guess the idea is you just kind of keep cards in hand. You go all in on the Master Core until they can answer it. And that's fine if you can kind of plan a little bit, at least in advance for that. I also haven't been against small creature mirrors in which Mastacor totally dominate, so that's fair enough. The final thing I'll say is that I might have been wrong to leave Wellwisher out against tricks. Even just, a, you know, one well-timed activation maybe makes him have to kind of combo on us twice, right? Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. But in any case, my friends, that was our elf debut Sorry for taking a long time on many of my turns. I am new to the format, I am new to the deck, and I think elves in general do sometimes require even a very competent and experienced pilot to go deep in the tank. So thanks for bearing with me for that. Thanks again to all supporters and all opponents and all viewers. I've heard it said that elves are the best deck in the format, basically. It's a little bit hard to say that definitively, but... This is another list that just jumped right off the page at me when I first started looking at decks in this format, and I can confirm that it feels very powerful to play. All kinds of fun. Hope you had fun watching it, and I hope to see you for the next video. Until then, my friends, take care, and if you've not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thanks for hanging out. Talk to you soon.